Hold up, it's the weighing. Call up and you're weighing. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge we ain't playing. When you think it's about to end, shit, we crank it up again. Hold up, weighing. Call up and you're weighing. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge we ain't playing. And we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up, hold up. Greg and friends, just keep it popping, keep it popping. Dropping knowledge, switching up the daily topics, switch it up. The latest interviews, okay, okay, we got it. Okay, we got it. Your favorite podcast, my boy, yeah, we the hottest. Oh, love. You gotta weigh it, weigh it. articulate, explain it. Explain it. Lay it all out with the bait and drop them game, no, we ain't playing. Juice my fans, let me know where you're at. It's all about a fight, who got that strap? All your biases can slay, let's just boys duck in the fade. Hold up. It's the way it, call up and you weigh it. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge, we ain't playing when you think it's so we crank it up again, hold up. Should we crank it up again, hold up. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We back with another one. You already know how it go on Mondays. Mondays you lose a little, 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 usually a little bit of a drag. And maybe this Monday might be a drag for you, but we here to talk some boxing. We have a good collection of boxing that we want to talk to you about today. Thank you to my Lord and save you for another one, because without him. None of this would be possible. Definitely want to talk about the entertainment YouTuber, TikToker, slash fighting real boxers to actual real boxers clashing. We're talking about Jake Paul taking on Tommy Fury out there in Saudi Arabia. It's going down uh, in Saudi Arabia. They're going to settle their differences inside the squared circle. Also, we got Teofima Lopez activated that mandatory and him and Josh Taylor seem to have a fight done and in place to take place. So we got to talk about that too. Cause again, safe to say both fighters have kind of wanted it. Josh Taylor has been trying to little boy, you know what I mean? Teofimo Lopez in a many different ways. So we're going to get into, we're going to talk about it. Welcome to the channel, man. You already know what it is. It's Francis. That's Greg over there. You know what I'm saying? We got a few particulars that we'd like to get through. That's one of them giving you the rundown of the show. The other part is letting you know how you can keep this show going. And that's where my main man, Greg, going to let you know what's going on. What's going on? Like always, man, another marvelous Monday, man. It's good to be here with my brother Francis talking some boxing. But like he said, the particulars are, listen, man, if you can't come to the channel and you haven't done it already, definitely like, subscribe, and share because it's going to help with the growth and visibility. And we're getting real close to our goal of 1K, man. So definitely spread the word so that we you know, can cross over that hump. In the meanwhile, go check us out on social media. We're also there on Instagram, The Wayne Boxing. And Twitter, Wayne Boxing One, man. So definitely go check that out, man. We try to keep you guys, you know, up to date with all the latest and breaking news. And definitely, like always, if you just want to listen, go check us out on all the major podcasts and platforms, man. You know, all the big ones. You see them right there on the screen if you're watching our YouTube. Go check us out. Like I say, it's a good listen. You know, you're walking on your way to work, whatever it is, man. Go check us out. But like always, we're back to talk this boxing talk. We're blessed to talk this boxing. And um, we're going to get into it. But Francis, what's going on, brother? Fight week. Yep. Another fight week. Um, Another fight week slash fight announcement. That's what makes it good. Even yeah. better. You know what I mean? The opportunity um, to get both those things in at one time. Uh -huh. um, and definitely Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. A lot of, uh, a lot of chatter, man. A lot of talk. A lot of obstacles that was in their way from preventing them this fight from happening a long time ago, they they managed to find a way by going out to Saudi Arabia and getting that oil money. Man. Oil money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Um, and it, it's gonna make for an interesting fight because yeah. Tommy has been criticized for his boxing ability that he has showed so far. He's being criticized for the boxing ability he has showed. At the same time, Jake didn't look the greatest in his last fight against Silva, even though he got the job done. A lot of questions, man. A lot yeah. of questions to be answered. You know what I'm saying? Tommy is considered a real boxer. Jake considers him, Jake Paul considers himself a real boxer, but I don't think the boxing community on a whole, not everybody. 
is agreeing with that. But you know, yeah, no, I agree, man. I think obviously this is gonna be the fight to kind of, I guess, answer that question. You know what I'm saying? Is he a real boxer? He's going in there against a real boxer. But like you say, Francis, obviously Tommy Fury hasn't looked great um, so far. He's got the Fury name that he's carrying. You know, that's, you know, a little story to it as well. They, Like you mentioned also, you know, they were supposed to fight a bunch of times. But this is the test, man. He's in there against a real boxer, not no MMA fighter, not a basketball player, not another, you know, social media person. Um, I guess we're going to get to see, man. And, de- and depending on how he does, maybe people will look at Jake Paul a little bit differently. Like you say, Francis, not everybody has said, yeah, he's a real boxer. Nah, he hasn't really fought anybody. This is the one where, um, you know, he can do that. And apparently right. he'll be ranked in the WBC if he does win. So no, you know, I'm telling you, man. Yeah. So I mean, he, he might be getting people to believe that you know he's really a boxer. You know, so this is definitely the fight that's gonna um, jumpstart something. You know, whether he loses and we say we expected it, or he legitimately wins and we say, hey, he's a contender now, man. He's in the rankings. <laughs> It'd be interesting, man. <laughs> It'd be super interesting. <laughs> but a lot of people are giving backlash for that said thing. How dare he get a, a ranking in the WBC? Right. Yeah. Like already? Like, what is the criteria? Exactly. What is the um what do you call it? What are the, the questions or the things that need to be done to prove that you have the capability? I was doing because it doesn't make any sense. Well, it's true. I mean, listen, you're any other fighter in the rankings and you're fighting other, you know, legitimate boxers, working your way up like anybody else. And this guy hasn't fought any boxers. You know what I'm saying? He's fought MMA guys, whatever, whatever. And Tommy Fury is going to be the key to him getting a ranking. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, man. Guys fight for years before they even crack certain rankings, you know? So I guess maybe the WBC is a part of the. The popularity contest, like hello guys, <laughs> you <know>? hello, <laughs> yeah, like it's crazy. Like even you look, I mean, this is the WBA, but I mean, like Lucas Body, he just broke into the WBA rankings, and this is what his fifteenth fight. And this guy's had six fights, five against, you know, one against a basketball player, three against MMA dudes, and you know, guys fight for a long time to get these um kind of rankings, man. So, um. It's interesting. It's interesting what the WBC, what is their criteria? You know, do you just have to be a popular name? You know, do you have to beat guys of some level of credibility? I don't know. I'd love to know. I'd love to know too. Hey, low key. A lot of people feel that way, man. We all know Jake's yeah. stumping Tommy. Facts. A lot of people feel like, listen, listen, listen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think a lot of people do forget with Tom, um, Jake Paul is that him and his brother, I mean, they are athletes. You know what I'm saying? Like they did do, I think they did collegiate wrestling, if I'm not mistaken, Francis. Mm-hmm. I mean, they do have some, you know, athleticism in their background. They're not just some YouTuber guys that just decided to box. I mean, you know, they are, you know, of a level of athlete. You know what I'm saying? And he has been training with top level guys, you know, since he's made, you know, this move into boxing, you know. So can he do it? I mean, listen, he can, man. We always say, Francis, what? If you you got gloves, you're going between the ropes, you got a chance. Right. How, how good of a chance do you have? I mean, that's always to be determined. But, um, I mean, he's been putting guys to sleep, you know? To sleep. So, I mean, you can't right, now, you tripping. now you tripping, Loki. You tripping. Okay, that's a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you are going too that's far. That's a bit of a yeah. You're gone too far, man. <laughs> yeah, man. He not, he not on Bevo level. Not yet, at least. Yo, he might get there. We don't know. But right now, not even close. And Loki's saying, what, dude? If you look at who Tommy and Jake fought, I take Jake resume. By a, by a fucking, he's, I guess he turned Irish on us now. By a fucking mile. <laughs> <laughs> well done, my boogie. <laughs> Tommy was fighting the same dude with like 32 losses and like one win or some bullshit like that. 
Ah, man. It all, it's all well and good until, like, you know, somebody really, really decides to give it their all. Yeah. They said, today I'm going to give it my all. Yeah. <laughs> Catch lightning in the proverbial bottle. And it's over. That's all it takes. But listen, yeah. let me know what you guys think about Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. This is not that kind of like crossover boxing, but man, they doing big numbers, man. They doing big numbers, and uh, everybody gonna be watching. Um, there's implications on the line when it comes to these two. So um, it's hard to not talk about this fight happening in Saudi Arabia. Man, you got to follow the money, man. It's going to be, you know, the white chairs are going to be on display. Woo. You know, them white chairs. Yeah, we're trying to get over there. But um, listen, man, that, that's where the money is right now. Pretty much any big fight kind of that we want to be seeing, they kind of look, we kind of look to Saudi Arabia to see if y'all want to fight first. Y'all want mm -hmm. it? I mean, you can have it if you want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody looks over to Saudi Arabia. So you're putting on another big event. Um, It seems like, they're gaining momentum, Francis, over there as far as the boxing. You know, what other fights can they attract over there? Or what other fights do they want um, to have over there, man? I'd be interested to know. And I guess, obviously, we can't look into the future. We'll see. But um, it looks like the boxing thing is kind of building over there. And another thing, Francis, this fight is putting light on Makabu and Badu Jack, which had that fight not been on that card, I mean, would we really be even interested in that fight too? You know what I mean? That's another, like... I guess if you're like really into boxing, that's another piece of it that you could enjoy. Definitely, is that uh, Mokabu versus Badu Jack? That's Badu Jack going for another world title, yeah, you know, another division. So, um, what he did one sixty eight, um, one seventy five, and now one, uh, one, and now cruiserweight, cruiserweight, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Definitely, definitely. So the question was posed to. Uh, to Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing regarding uh, Jake Paul getting that 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 spot if he wins on the WBC ranking, um, and he says sometimes governing bodies have to live in that commercial world as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. Tommy Fury is a proper fighter, and Jake Paul would make a statement if he won that fight. Not a statement that he can challenge for a world title, but ultimately there's a little bit of publicity in there. Hearn told, in other words, a little bit of money in there. <laughs> Cha ching. <laughs> that payday, payday. You want payday? I know that. Is it right? Not really, because there are fighters that deserve to be in the top fifteen much more than Jake Paul. But it's the world we live in. <laughs> really? Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> he goes mentally he'll break Tommy Fury I think he'll mess with Tommy mentally and I think by the time they get in the ring if they don't get in the ring I think Tommy will be defeated before the first fight even takes place I yeah. think he will win by knockout knockout <laughs> <laughs> Listen, listen, I'm telling you, this is the type of, like, you got to keep it real. It's not right, but it's the money. Yeah. You follow the money. They get the grease, you know what I'm saying? They get to get the little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That little sanction. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? The bigger pay person bring that bigger payday. They're like, he'll definitely pay the sanction if he is. Listen. <laughs> listen. They just don't know. Jake ain't really about that, but it's all good. He got his own belt, right? Because yeah, you know, he got that. Yeah. Yes, he do. <laughs> <laughs> you feel what I'm saying, though? Yeah. So, this fight here, is again, is taking place. Uh, trying to get the, the undercard. I was looking for I didn't see it, though. You, you got the card up? Uh, You know what? Let me go back. I had it up here before. Uh, let's see. Just give me one second, everybody. Smash that like and subscribe button. 
Oh, but it, it, it oh it went. I know why. It went down as a twenty six. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Day after, so I was looking. I was like, I didn't see it though. Uh, J- Jake will be Tommy to the punch. He will outspeed him, outpower him. He doesn't have anything to lose. If Tommy loses, Tyson Fury, big. Take on Whoop Fury ass. <laughs> Gonna disqualify him as a Fury. <laughs> Facts. That's a good point, Loki. Because that's also mental pressure for Tommy Fury, believe it or not. All jokes yeah. aside, that's mental pressure, man. They fighting family. You you can't lose to a YouTuber. Like, that's know. pressure that they put it on. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I think Jake Paul's playing into that anyway. I mean... It's always mental warfare with him, you know, before you get into the ring, you know. So um he's definitely gonna be playing on all that. And he might be right. Maybe all that energy and everything might be done for Tommy Fury by the time the fight starts, man. But um But yeah, man, this fight right here is taking place Sunday, February the twenty sixth. Commission, the Dubai Boxing Commission promoter is Khalid bin. Abdul Ziz Skills Challenge Entertainment Matchmaker Steve Furness Pay that back to Steve Say Steve come through Inspector And Shuri Of Mary And Mary Jean Are gonna be the inspectors on the show You got Elon Jr. Makabu Taking on Badu Jack for the WBC Cruiserweight title then you also got on the card, you got Batter Samarine, Samarine taking on Viral Simon. Um, that fight right there is going to be Jake Paul. Is obviously the, one of the fe- main features, if not the main feature, that everybody's coming to see. Jake mm-hmm. Paul taking on Tommy Fury, both undefeated. So somebody's old Greg has got to go. Disappear. Okay. And they pride too. Right? Just for yeah. a little bit though. want to return it. You know, and then obviously you got some local um, fighters from Saudi Arabia is also going to be on the card um, displaying their talent. So look out for that one right there on Sunday in Saudi Arabia. Loki says super fight. Greg and Francis versus Jake and Logo, Logan in a two versus two tag team match. They don't we want gotta, it, bro. We got to do it at WrestleMania, but they don't want it, man. They don't want it. <laughs> Dude, this is the I'm a Hardy Boys fan. They don't want it, man. <laughs> don't let me hit the ropes, man. It's over. <laughs> Aerial attack. There you go, man. Francis from the top rope. You yeah, you know. <laughs> and if you say that you're not looking forward to Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, cap. I'm calling cap. You're a capper. You lying. You know you want to see whether or not Tommy Fury can knock out Jake Paul. Of course, man. Somebody get knocked out, I believe. Yeah, Unless yeah, yeah. they like, throw themselves all over each other and like hug up the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. You know what I'm saying? It's a straight yeah. hug fest. You know when you want to fight? You know when two guys want to fight each other so bad? They just so they just be hugging all night. Referee's just yeah. like, okay, break. Okay, break. Dudes, can you guys stop hugging each other? Like, fight. It's a fight. They just, they just want to punch so bad. They're just throwing themselves, like, punching like a 360. Yeah. That type of vibe, man. Uh, make you crazy. Uh, what? Just hop. Just hoping Tommy wins. I mean, to be honest with you, on the low key, like, Hardcore boxing fans are praying that Tommy wins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the more progressive boxing fans, they're like, yo, <laughs> Jake about to sleep Tommy Fury. <laughs> <laughs> Jake about to put him in the dirt. <laughs> Maybe looking at the Saudi Arabian lights. Listen, yeah. man. Listen. Listen. Hurt his feelings, he might have to stay out there and heal up, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. CBG saying I'm rolling with 
the American. Yeah, yeah you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, like, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. Know, yeah. Play the, the anthem, the song, like, what's going on, man? God. Then you got Carl Frotch getting called out by Jake Paul. He's actually answering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carl Frotch out there talking about, listen, bruv, I'm a four-time world champion. You sure you want these problems? Like, why are you like you like like Derek said, like, yo, Carl, go get beat up for the check, man. Let's go get knocked out for that check. You're gonna get payday. Yeah. You know, payday. <laughs> payday, payday. You want payday? I know that. <laughs> like, no lie, no lie. As I tell no lies. There's two people in boxing right now that like their troll game is on like it's on like a thousand. <laughs> My number one favorite is Alexander Usyk. His troll game is yeah. on a thousand. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> if I go through the amount of times he's trolled, bro, he trolled mad people, man. Like, bro, I'm very feel. I very feel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just wicked. Yeah. Wicked. Jake Paul's. Level, yeah. Jake Paul's the next one. His troll game is on. Yeah. He's still working on Connor. But Connor is like, yo, there's no way I'm giving that kid that fight. No. <laughs> but you know, you never say never. It's never say never. Up enough money, you never know. Never. If you feel me? Hey. Get them Saudis involved. And then everything is a go. <laughs> That everything is a go. So that's what we're talking about um, right now. What do you guys think about that fight? Also, on the docket, we got Teofima Lopez, man. Him and Josh Taylor have locked in. Um, they're either into conversation about, you know what I'm saying, um, the particulars. But let me just take a quick look at it just so you can, you know, Get an understanding of what's going on. So, um, all right, hold up, hold up. Um, so yeah, so they said Taylor said they've ordered me to fight Tiafima Lopez, right? Because the talks between him and Catterall for the rematch kind of broke down. So, WBO is like, listen, you gotta fight this man, we're gonna strip you. So, long story short, I think they did that. Yeah. You don't want to get stripped. Don't want to get stripped. And it's a big fight, man. I'm sure there's some good financial um, reasons behind that as well. You know what I'm saying? You know, because there was talk of him going up to 147. But, um, listen, it's a big fight. It's a big fight at 140 for sure. This is a fight they both kind of wanted. Yeah. They, they both these fighters kind of wanted this fight and um and they got it for Josh feeling like Teofimo is not in his league and for Teofimo feeling like Josh don't know what he's talking about. He hasn't gotten in there with me. You know what I mean? And when he do, he going to find out like how mm-hmm. good I really I'm going to show you how great I am. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to show you. Yeah, I'm going to show you how great I am. That's what that's the type of vibe he on. Tell him I actually won all four belts. You didn't. You know, I'm sure that's got to be a bit of conversation between the two. You know what I'm saying? But it's a good fight, though. It's a good fight. I can't wait to see. It. Hopefully, we get an announcement on you know more specific dates and all that kind of stuff. But it's good to see that you know fight is seemingly gonna happen, man. That would be amazing. Smash that like, subscribe button. Teofima Lopez versus Josh Taylor. Let me know what you think. What are your thoughts regarding that fight right there? Great fight. Great fight. I think it's going to be, you know, tough for both of them. You know, obviously high level fights, you know, got to do a little bit more, you know, thinking in there, a little bit more of a chess match. But, um, 
I think they're both they're both up for it, man. They're both up for it. It could it could be it could be one of the great fights. I think it could end up being. Could be Loki one of the great fights. Yeah, man. Loki saying Teal female is trash. Teal female is trash. <laughs> and Josh Taylor, trash. Why you say that, man? <laughs> <laughs> you just blowing up everything, man. You just <laughs> He's also saying they should let the big low key sing the national Florida anthem. All the right. big low key, <laughs> man. How come we talking about Jake Paul and not in Florida? Florida, not Florida, Florida, yeah, Florida. Florida. Florida anthem. Yeah, we gotta say it with that Florida accent. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Man, how come we talking about Jake Paul and not in Ghana and Wilder trash talk? Or how about John Jones, the greatest athlete fighter? Of all time, coming back. Cause they're not fighting this week. <laughs> We're talking not about what time is it? Yeah. Oh, skidoo! Almost time to get busy. But yeah, so y'all go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button if it's the first time here. What's going on? Welcome, 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 um, to the channel. We talking about Tia Fima Lopez versus Josh Taylor. Are you excited for that fight? Does that fight make you want to, you know, book a book a trip to go see it? Get your snacks and your party essentials ready for that night? Or are you like, nah, I got other things to do. I got something else I could do better. Then sit down and watch that fight. Depends how far to travel. <laughs> Depends how far to travel. No, what, for the party? No, for the fight. To be at the fight. Depends oh, how close yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, not if you want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> it really matter. If you want to see, you're you, you going to go wherever you got to go. Yeah. But uh, that's what we want to know, man. We want to definitely know from you guys how you feel about that uh, that fight right there. Also, Jake Paul, Tommy Fury. This is, uh, this is, I guess you would say, the true crossover between boxing and... Hmm. Like a boxer not turning... Pro boxer the traditional way. Well, it's definitely that. Yeah. Just going through the amateurs, competing in tournaments. Right. More like, yeah, I'm just gonna like take a couple like boxing matches, become three and zero, and then fight this person, and then I'm a pro. I'm ranked in <laughs> WBC. I don't know. <laughs> you want to tell me? I'm confused because that's how I see it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That is the road he's traveled though. Like. I mean, he really didn't do any legitimate buildup. He yeah. fought Nate Robinson. Like, <laughs> fought Nate Robinson. Before that, he fought Deji. Before that, he fought Askren. Askren. Then he fought Woodley. Then he fought Woodley again. And he fought Anderson. And then now he's getting ranked in the WBC. That that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you have to question that. Like, it doesn't what? sound right about that. No. <laughs> Is it is it the more profitable or the more lucrative path, Greg? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you terrible. Yeah. Is, it, is it more profitable? Or more yeah. Smash that like button, man. We wrote to one k. We're trying to get to one thousand subscribers. Let me help us to get to one thousand subscribers. Road to one k. Let's go. Hey, listen. A lot of people are writing off Josh Taylor in this fight against Tiafimo Lopez, but. Josh Taylor's always been at 140, mm -hmm. became undisputed champion at 140, whereas Teofimo is going up to 140. It will be his second or third fight, if I'm not mistaken, at 140. I think his second fight because he just fought Sandno Martin. That was his first fight at 140, right? No, it was his second fight. He fought... Um, Who's that? I'd have to look, but I think this would be his third fight at 140. But I'll check because I don't want to be um, with false information. Let me check now. It'd be his, yeah, this would be his third fight. He fought Pedro Campa. That was his first fight. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then who he fought next? And then he fought Sandor Martin. Yeah. And then this would be his third fight, right? This would be his third fight. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. So there you go, right there, ladies and gentlemen. You see how you know it's going down with that one, but uh. That fight right there is underrated. Can't wait for it. It's kind of like that Staniosis versus 
um, Virgil Ortiz fight. That fight's gonna be good. That fight's gonna be really good. Yeah, that fight's gonna be good. So Sunday again, February twenty sixth, Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. They get to settle all their beefs. Whatever beefs they have, they're gonna settle it. <laughs> Tyson gonna be in attendance. I'm sure he is. Yeah, he might. I think. I think they all gonna be out there. Yeah, probably be in the corner. Even though we know he should be preparing for a fight. Getting rid of the belly. <laughs> Usyk done signed all the signings and whatnot. I've never seen Tyson Fury run from anybody. He's literally running from Usyk right now. It's I'm hilarious. I'm telling you, enough. Greg, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> hilarious. Hel- hilarious. That he is He's six foot nine, dude, just running. Like, why have you taken the fight? Oh, they said no, you will come to take, make the deal. Usyk done got his deal signed. Like, where are you at, Tyson? Belly. <laughs> where are you at? The rabbit is coming for you. Call him That's a little crazy, rabbit, man. little middleweight. So they knock out the middleweight, man. What you? T- what's going on? It's funny you showed that clip the other day, and he was trash talking Usyk, and he wasn't budging. So he started trash talking the dude next to him, right next to him. He's yeah. like, "You are. You guys are gonna get it." Usyk, I can't penetrate this wall. I yeah. can't penetrate this. He's just looking at him like this. Mmm. <laughs> like, the dude looks like he means business. Like, he's not yeah. playing around. Yeah. So, don't forget, the last time Fury fought, Dillian White already fought already. Tyson Fury hasn't fought yet. Anthony Joshua fought. Tyson Fury hasn't fought yet. And Joshua's about to fight again. Tyson Fury still hasn't fought yet. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Like, look how long that is. Like, a lot of people are fighting. But the excuse is going to come in. Oh, you know, uh, you know, the, the money's not right or yeah. this or that. No, dude. You want to fight or not? <laughs> Just sign the contract, man. Let's go. We haven't had an undisputed champion like I don't know, man. Like 20 years, it seems. Fury Chisora was definitely before Dillian White, though. I can almost... I can almost guarantee that. No, actually, that was after. Fury Chisora. Yeah, actually, it was after, yeah. It was, it was after, yeah. Same tone. Okay, cool. Cool. They fought so many times, shoot. <laughs> yep, yep. But that that's that's good. That's good. That means he's not going to be too much inactive. Usyk fought. Let me see. Loki, you'd beat Tio. <laughs> Loki saying, "I think I beat Tio Fimo." What one? Wait, one leg kick. You want to get these guys into the MMA stuff? Yeah, they probably wouldn't do too well over there, man. Okay, so so Usyk is one that be at the ring longer. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to but know. He looks in shape right now, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be in, like, I, I just don't think that style, like, that moving style, like, Fury has really fought somebody with that moving style that built. I think that's what's making him, like, really, you know, have a little uh, drag in his step when it comes to making the fight. Yeah. Now, for Undisputed. When have you seen... It takes so long to make an undisputed heavyweight champion. You know how long it took to get to this place? They're going to fumble the ball on the one-yard line. Like, something is up. Yeah, man. Some Something is up. <laughs> and I know it's not Belly because he's calling him out every day. You want me to pull up? Matter of fact, let's see if he's done one lately. Lee, we coming. Give me one second. Let me see if he... Let me see my bad Usyk because he's on another level. I don't know. It almost seems like on a weekly basis, he's sending him a video, tagging him in it. Like, I'm a Usyk fan. Like, I don't care. No. Yeah. That that guy right there. If I'm going a dark alleyway. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Usyk, let's go, my guy. Let's make it happen. Yeah. 
Yeah, CBG saying Usyk sent Fury the contract. It looks like it, man. One more time for you guys, if you don't, if you forget. <laughs> you, 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 one more time, man, to show you how my man is, is on another level. Hey, baby, I'm coming for you. <laughs> hey, baby, I'm coming for you. You feel what I'm saying? He's a hey, belly. I coming for you. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Hold on. What one of my other, the other ones? Yeah. <laughs> hey, one of my other favorites, man. This is one of my other favorites. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have fun. Hopefully they fight soon. Cause listen, I need to play all these. Belly. Look what I'm eating. Yum yum yum. You're next. Belly. Look what I'm eating. Yum, yum, yum. You're next. Like, are you serious? Like, with a straight face, like, he's face. He not hey, you're next. He did that to Derek Chisora. Yeah. He did that to Tony Bell. He did that to Anthony Joshua. Bro, anybody who said, tell, he did, I'm coming for you. He used to be like, Derek. <laughs> Derek running on the beach. I'm coming for you, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I, yo, I, yeah, Usyk, yeah, he's that guy. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. <laughs> Dude came for more and kick AJ's behind. Yo, let's go because I'm gonna keep going all that. He came for more and kick AJ's behind. Yo, we need a whole show hey, just hey, on Usyk. Yo, he made a grown man cry in the ring, bro. Yeah, he is- made a grown man cry. I mean, a grown man shed tears and threw a temper tantrum. He threw the belts on the ring and broke down and started crying. That he did, yeah. <laughs> that dude, right? A grown man. Stop it. Stop. Yum, 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 yum. No, no. Yo, let's go, man, because I'm... Whew. Oh, sorry, man. I had to get that one out. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for real. But listen, man, we definitely, this is why we tell you guys to tune in all the time and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button. Because, you know, sometimes we have guests, you know, passing through the show, man. And we definitely got a good one tonight. We definitely like to highlight, you know, all areas of boxing, man, not just have the fighters on. But we have like to have, you know, trainers, referees, whatever it is on the show, man. We got a good one tonight, man. And she's definitely known all across Ontario boxing, if you haven't been around man she's big in the scene whether it's inside the ring or outside the ring organizing things and we're so so glad to have lee smith joining us how are you doing i'm good i'm good thank you so listen like always we like to have our guests come on here and just give a little background about themselves and let us know how you got started in boxing oh wow okay um i started after my heyday in taekwondo um 16 and a half years ago Purely by accident, uh, found Liverpool Boxing Club with Preston Roberts. He was my coach. Um, He's now departed. Um, And he was the one that actually, I wanted to box. He wanted me to be um, a coach and an official. That's what he saw in me. So um, that was his uh, pathway for me. And in many ways, he taught me how to be a good coach and an official. And uh, while, while you at it, Lee, why don't you tell us who was your favorite fighter um, <laughs> growing up? Oh, gosh. Ann Wolf, number one. Um, uh, Muhammad Ali. Roberta Duran, hands down. Uh, Roberta Duran was my number one. Um, Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, you know, those were the greats, uh, you know, Mosley, all those guys uh, have always been. But uh, De- Roberto Duran, number one, and Wolf right there as well. So before we get, you know, too deep into uh, into the interview, um, we definitely want to let you know that uh, Lee's here to share some information with y'all um, in just a little bit. But we want y'all to get to know her a little bit first, um, and then we can make it happen. So. 
Um, speaking of that, did boxing choose you or did you choose boxing? Good question. Um, I've always been a fan watching it, you know, with Howard Cassell. I always love watching it because of him. Um, and just boxing in general. I love sports. So for me, it was an art form that was fascinating and was very intriguing to me. Um, but after I, I left Taekwondo, I wanted to do something else that would challenge me. And I guess in some ways that has been a calling. And then it became something that I got into. You know, I, I think it more or less chose me. And um, after your days, did you play any other sports while you was, you know, oh, what I mean, um, doing the boxing? Was boxing just it for you? On um, Listen, I went from doing baseball, football, you name it. Sports in our family was something that was very big. Soccer, you know, and it's not the standard soccer that you have over here. We we played European soccer. Um, so for me, it was always a big thing to be in sports no matter what. Uh, what was it like growing up where you came from? <laughs> oh. If, uh, from the West Indies, uh, women don't really do sports. Um, <laughs> you know, be real about that one there, you know. Um, you were supposed to be back in the house doing a lot of stuff. So playing sports, mm, that was kind of back in the day was not something that um, was looked upon as something go for it and very supportive unless you were doing something for the country. And um, at that point, that was great. But, you know, as a kid growing up and as a female at that, it was not something that was pushed upon you or encouraged to be a part of at all. Wow, that's great. You got one? That's amazing that you said it because when you think about it, uh, that's where the transitions are coming in now with females being able to, you know, to go out and compete in many different aspects of activities, you know, that normally they wouldn't be able to do. One yeah. of those, obviously, being boxing, because yeah. females boxing is on fire. I mean, fire. We're yeah. talking about on this period of 168, 160. So let me run it down to you. You got Franchon Cruz is earning 168. Clarissa Shears, 160. You got a unified champion, Natasha Jonas and Terry Harper at 154. 147, Jessica McCaskill, 140. Chantel Cameron, 135. Katie Taylor, 130. Alicia Baumgartner, 126. Amanda Serrano, should I keep going? Hey. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I can only say... If it wasn't for the Layla Alleys and the Ann Wolves of the world or the Kathy Williams, this wouldn't be happening. You know, oh, let's be real about that. If it wasn't for the Lene Brownies that took on this fine science, love of the science of boxing, you wouldn't have the Serrano sisters doing what they do, you know, or Clarissa Shields shining from... Listen, everybody knew who she was in the amateurs and couldn't wait till she got to the Olympics. And look at her now. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, Katie Taylor, what can we say about her? I've watched her from amateurs onwards and to see where she's at and what she's doing. I mean, come on. This, we are on fire. It's, it's our time. Yay. Um, but you know what? I have to give those that have supported it and also push for it their props as well because if it wasn't for them this wouldn't be on fire as it is right now it really wouldn't be happening now so i'm so elated that it's happening for women in boxing but in sports in general just in sports we're just shining and we're showing you we are good we are really really good and it's time it's our time how do you feel about the um the, the 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 pay you think their pay should be going up because i personally think it should be i think they should women should be able to fight more rounds because i've heard a lot of ladies 
say they'd like to do more rounds. Obviously, they got to get paid for it. But do you think it's time for them to do 12 rounders and go three minutes? I think it's they could do it. Well, well, here's the thing. And I'm going to say this. Women equally can do as many rounds as any man when they're sparring, training. So why can't they do it when it's time to shine? Exactly. They can do it. Their conditioning, their everything they do is not any different at all. They give 3,000% of themselves, blood, sweat, and tear. So you don't think Serrano can go 12 rounds? Trust me, did you not see the Katie Taylor fight? That woman was ready to go another three, four, five rounds to keep going because she had a statement to make. And I mean, come on, it's their time. Give it to them. Definitely. Smash that like and subscribe button, people. Um, you know, when you look at it, you not only compete in the sport, but you're now competing in sport in a different aspect, um, being an official form of fish. You can explain the whole process of what it is because you're in like, you know what I'm saying? You and I say the sweet spot right now, you get to kind of, you know, do what you, you need to do that's relative for the sport. So talk to us about uh, being an official and all the other accolades that you so duly have. Um, being an official, it wasn't something that I, I was planning on doing. Um, but when I got the, uh, as they say, the bug, um, it was great. I, I enjoyed it. I love being in the ring with the boxers, just being, I'm like right in the center of it all. And I get to see it happening and unfolding. And it's, it's just beautiful to watch two athletes bring the best out of each other and do what they do for the sweet science. But my job as an official at the end of the day is always making sure that the safety of the boxer is number one. They follow the rules, they're safe, and they're actually doing what they came in the ring to do. Whoever the winner is, I never know, but I enjoy being in the ring as that official. You know, and it's an honor to be in there with some of the greats that have moved on. And, you know, like Mandy Bujo, I've had the opportunity to be in the ring with her and just to see her and be in that ring, in that presence is awe inspiring. But also it's a thrill and an honor for me as well. You know. Yeah, that's amazing, man. That's amazing to be able to, you know, ha have that type of experience. And now you being an official, how was your time in the amateurs coming up? And when you became an official, did, did things change? Did your perspective of what was going on on the other side while you were as an athlete change when you got behind the veil? Actually, it didn't change for me. It really didn't change. I had a profound respect for who was part of the sport in itself whether it be an official or an administrator, it didn't change that perception for me. It just gave me more respect for them and the tirelessness that they give the volunteer. Because some of them don't get paid for what they do, but they're putting in 10, 15, 20 hours to so that the athletes can have an event. You know, so, I mean, hats off to them for that. But when I started out as, as an official in boxing, I went through the ringer. I, I, I would tell you that. I went through the ringer. Um, I was an unknown. So for me, you can tell when somebody doesn't know and they fear what they don't know, they do certain things, you know, and it's it was my job to either have, I had two choices, play along and let them think that way or educate them and let them know their thinking is off and I am a person and I'm worthy to be where I am, you know, and, and that's why I do what I do. So um, that's one of the choices that I had to make with that um, and just keep going and elevating myself, studying, understanding the rule book, knowing the calls, making the right calls, watching, you know, countless videos of live events all over the world, practicing you know, getting my mentors and having them teach me and to be the best that I can be for the athletes, 
so that they can have an amazing experience. Yep, that's see, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about to be able to pass on to these um these coaches and these young fighters is absolutely pivotal because that's how again boxing ontario where we are that's gonna get they're gonna get better right. the, the, the officiating gets better the fighters get better the trainers get better you know every the whole system as a whole becomes better we pump out better athletes you know what i'm saying that can better represent um the province so that that's all should be working in one direction so real quick um let the people know exactly you know what I'm saying? Just what you, you got to share with him. Um, you got the floor. Uh, basically, I want to thank you guys first and foremost for allowing me to come on your podcast here. It's a great honor. I, I do watch it and I love every second of it. But um, I wanted to thank you for um, letting me be able to present that we're doing an all-female. This is the second year and it's called Women's Reign 2. Uh, we were, I don't know if you guys were there last year, but, uh, last year was the first time we ever had in over 10 years plus an all female card, all female referees, officials, you name it. We had all female and before the doors were open, we were pretty much maxed out in capacity, everything. We hit a record just for a night show. And so they immediately before the show even ended won the second event. So we decided, hey, let's give them what they want because they want it. So as of June 9th to the 11th, we are looking to host an all female event for three days. And so we want people to come out, support. We would love boxers from all over the US and Canada to register um, on our website and box make history be a part of this history because you we don't have that in canada we do not have an all-female event of any kind much less this kind and to be able to have more women come to have an all-day event or a two-day or three-day event we are making history so we want them at budo canada we want them to come out we want them to register we want them to make this bigger better and make history for themselves and for Canada. What while we uh do you, are you familiar with the the uh the I don't know if Greg, would you say the national team system? More of that system where if you're chosen to be on a national team, you have to go to Quebec and you have to train pretty much uh if I'm not mistaken, you tra- you just you are just the athlete alone goes and they go yeah. through a whole entire training. How do you feel about that system um, to pump out athletes for a national team and just their criteria in which they, you know, go about doing this? Well, I mean, it's something that it needs to be transparent and it's on their website. And I think it's something that they wanted to encourage so that they could have better athletes represent Canada for all of the provinces and just to really and truly you know, own the podium because it's been a long time since we've owned that podium. So I guess in many ways, what they're trying to do is they've seen other countries do something similar to that. And they figure if we can get them in one place, train them, own them, grow them, develop them to be better than they already are from where they've gotten them and to give them that international experience, we can then start by owning that podium you know and that's something that um they've they've been looking to do for themselves um because for me it's like you get an opportunity as a as a, as a trainer you get a fighter walks in the gym um and you start to you start to sculpting you you, you start the sanding you start the 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 the, the priming then you putting on the, the staining then you putting on the finish just to hand it over to somebody else to maybe chip off a little bit over here, a little bit over there and kind of change the way it looks uh, for, for those fighters who, you know, have developed a system with their trainers to go now and be trained by somebody else. How does, or how can it be become available for the coaches to also benefit from 
this higher level of training that you are saying I don't have because you have the training to train my athlete? Well, I'll answer it in many levels because there's layers to your your statement that you're making there. That's and, one, and, and one of the things that I'm going to give you is an analogy of the U.S. team. Now, the U.S. team has a training center in Colorado. Everybody goes to their different boxing clubs and gets their training still, get their one-on-one -on -one that they get. But when it comes time to come in to the house, they come into the house, they have their coaches there that they train and own them and groom them in certain ways. And yes, they may change their technique a little bit so that they can elevate themselves. Remember this, and, and this is the key thing that I think a lot of people have to understand. We as coaches, because I am a coach myself, I will train my boxer and I will train them to a certain way. But if somebody else can come in and add to that, that boxer is working and benefiting from not just one, but two. And that boxer is elevating their game. They're not diminishing it. They're elevating them to the next level. And if that helps you to learn as well, benefit from that learning. Because that's, that's how we're going to grow. So if, is sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. You no, know, if I hold on to that boxer, I'm now diminishing them and their ability to grow and develop and to basically win and own that podium. Greg, that sorry. Yeah. Perception. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, I, I agree with what you're saying. But do you think the level of coaching that we currently have is maybe not at a higher level because we haven't seen the results? you know, with them going to these camps, um, maybe does the coaching have to change? I know they did recently um, get rid of the coordinator or, or whatever it is out there. Um, we recently had Chris Johnson on the show that said he'd love to get the opportunity um, to be the coach of Canada. Do we need a name like that who is accomplished and, um, you know, has done some things in boxing on the Olympic level and professional level with their fighters? Do we need somebody like that who we can say, okay, that's an accomplished person that, yeah, they, they probably are on a level because they, they've done some things. Right. I'm going to put it to you this way. We have amazing coaches. Hands down, we have some of the best coaches. Dwight Fraser is one of them. He is an amazing man with wealth of knowledge. We have that. Okay. Um, we have Armand from Atlas. We have so many coaches that are amazing and there's things that I learned from them as well. So I'm not taking nothing for granted because I'm always learning. And that's the key that you as a coach need to do is always be willing to learn. What I'm going to say to you is this. We have a coach that has a name in Canada. He's there on the national team as well. Do we need others to help elevate it? Maybe so. It's up to Boxing Canada to make that decision, that choice. But I'm going to tell you this. We have amazing, amazing coaches that have experience, have knowledge, and pass on that knowledge. And when it comes to giving them the opportunities, maybe that's something that, again, Boxing Canada may need to look at and start branching and kind of having that open dialogue and communication. Um, because I can tell you this. Chris Johnson, I know him well enough to say that, yes, he has the credentials. He has the ability as well. These are some great coaches that across Canada, they're, you pick pockets and you'll get them. Bring them around the table. Maybe draw up a new blueprint. Make some changes. Change it up and stimulate what needs to be stimulated. There are so many things that you could think of doing or whatever. And, I mean, it's easy to... Look outside and make that pointing of that finger. But until you actually see what needs to be done on the inside and seeing how you can get the outside and the inside to come together and break that bubble, that's the key thing that needs to happen. It really does. And that's why sometimes you you see um, it becomes difficult because, again, a lot of times you have to make a decision on who is going to lead the troops. Not everybody can be a leader. Again, I, I kind of struggle with the, maybe it's just me. I kind of struggle with the idea of kind of presetting fighters in their subconscious mind. 
about looking for somebody to elevate you to the next level where we see a lot of fighters having three, four, five, and six different trainers throughout their career. And, you know, m most often than not, it's after a loss. And you're looking for something to either, you know, to change or to whatnot, but it doesn't usually work out. You might get a win and two losses with that person, and then you've gone to somebody else. So th that's where my struggle comes in is, is that a... Is that a subconscious thing we see that we're planting in the mind of fighters that when they get to a certain when they get to a certain level and you have the ability that it's okay to what to look for somebody to elevate you like how does that work You know what that's a good question that you would have to get I mean there's so many ways to answer that question but I'm going to say it like this <laughs> sometimes that person has already been looking before they even started to join that one coach so while they go to you coach number 1 they're already still looking at coach number 2 so they were already you are just a a moment in time because they really actually wanted somebody else from the get go they're just passing by taking what they can get from others and creating their own form of whatever it is they have in their mind. But if you want to learn the science, if you have a goal to be at the Olympics or go pro or whatever you choose to do, you make some choices, good, bad, and indifferent, whether you win or lose, you keep going back. You keep learning, you keep elevating yourself. And if at that point, it doesn't work with the two of you together. That's when you decide to start looking. Don't be looking while you're already coming in saying, hey, I want to join your gym. And you really don't really have any intention to really join the gym and to really elevate yourself to be at a level. Come with the intention that I have a dream. I have a goal. And I know because of your credentials, I can make it with you. Let's do it together. Let's climb that hill. Let's do what we have to do. You never know. I love it. I, 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 that's, that's, those are some of the things that, you know I mean? It's very important and we need to, you know, try and figure it out uh, uh, every step of the way for us here. We are big on Ontario boxers. We went, I went to Brampton cup, the nationals kind of seen how um, the numbers turned out who won gold how many goals silver bronze in we didn't do too bad this year um but there's definitely room for improvement you know speaking on that you know the olympics is also another there's another elephant so quote unquote in the room because you know the ioc is you know looking to ban um russian fighters from competing the olympics and then also the other stuff that's going on with the olympics being threatened to be completely shut down um, talk to us about that being official, if you have an insight more on that to share with us. I really don't have an insight on that. That That's something that we look to our federation for in the sense of their direction and what they've chosen to go with. Um, it is sad to see the state of affairs that it's happened right now as an official, as well as, uh, you know, those that want to compete. It, it's kind of we're all hoping for the best because boxing has been around for many, many years. And it would be a shame to not have it as part of the Olympics. But I mean, really and truly, I hope that it is there. I really do. For those of uh, my other colleagues that will have that opportunity and boxers that have that dream that they've been working towards day in and day out, blood, sweat, and tear. I hope that they get that opportunity so that they can shine. Definitely. Definitely. Greg, any final questions you got before I get into some of my famous questions? Cause you know, I gotta, yeah, I know you gotta do the famous questions. Just one last question from me. Um, you know, you mentioned about, you know, your mentors, you know, coming up, um, throughout, um, your years and given, I mean, still black history month, do you see yourself as one of those pioneers for, you know, some up and coming ladies that, you know, look to you as a referee, a coach, because I'm going to tell you, you are, you are one. I got to say that. Um, but do you see yourself as that to the younger generation coming up? Oh, gosh, 
I honestly, I, I never thought of it. I'll be honest enough to say that. Um, and the only reason why I say that is if somebody comes and says, hey, can you show me? Can you teach me? Not a problem. I don't think anything of it. And um, I think that one of the things I learned very quickly when I first started, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, Kathy Urie and uh, Carrie Ireland, they've always instilled in me to always pass on the knowledge. Don't hold it share it, let the others grow. And so that when they move on and they elevate, it's because of the things that you've given them and those little timbits of jewels that you've given to make them get better at what they do. That's the accomplishment in itself for me. So when somebody achieves and they succeed, I'm so happy for them. And if I had a little snippet of that, so be it. I love him. See what I'm talking about? Just being able to, you know what I'm saying, inspire uh, many along the way. Um, we don't know how much longer we're going to have her a part of, you know what I'm saying, the boxing Ontario ecosystem to where her hand is on it. But she always going to be, you know what I mean, around to help. Um, drop your social media before, before I forget because I'm good for it. Well, hey, everybody knows how to reach me by text um, and by Facebook. I'm always... My phone is never off. I'll be honest with you. I get calls 24-7 from all over the world. So uh, by all means, give me an email, lorsmith71 at gmail.com. Text me, 416-274-5671. Anytime you want a question or you need some help with matchmaking, things of that nature, I'll be more than happy to help or network with somebody else in another country for another show or something like that. I'm always there to help out. See, when I be telling them that boxing business, 20, like the airport, it never sleeps, man. It's just always, hey, yo, what you call me? Listen, listen, sorry, man. That's just, I'm, 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 I'm working. Like, that's when I'm up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right. Hey, I could be on vacation, and I've been on vacation many times where I've gotten people from England or in the U.S. or Canada asking for help to match make a show or can you find me a fighter to come to my show? And I'll say, give me five minutes and I'll make the happen. And then I give them the information. I could be at a tournament in the U.S. and I find a prospect for them. So I send them over to Canada to showcase them, but also to give that boxer and that club something for them to have. You know, uh, I don't hold on to it. I want you to succeed. If you or the club succeed, we all succeed. So, you know, there you go. All right, we're going to get into some of my world famous questions that I like to ask. Um, and we obviously going, you know what I'm saying? Tune it up to Lee Smith. So when you leave, when you in the gym, are you the type of trainer that plays music or no music? Oh, have to have music. What's wrong with you? And tell us what type of music you're listening to in the gym if you get control of the music. Because I know sometimes you let some of the fighters get control. <laughs> Listen, if I get control of that music, you're going to hear some house music, some serious old school music that has some true words in it instead of this garbage that people listen to. So, yeah, we go way back, way, way back. I love it. When you are traveling, doing your matchmaking you're officiating throughout the world let's start with the u.s when you're going to the u.s when you land what is the first thing that you got to do oh, as, soon as, you, as soon as you uh, land in the u.s i always say <laughs> so um that's the first thing i do after that i just honestly i drop my stuff at the hotel and I go out and I start talking to people, seeing what's around, getting to know the area and just having conversations with strangers. I don't know, but I'm just having a grand old time. I love it. I love it. Now we get into the phone ones. All right. Here we go. Great. You ready for this? Here you go. So after your big event and before your big event, what is your pre-fight meal before your big event? So before your big event, what? Is it that you like to consume? Um, and what is your post-event guilty pleasure? Like, I, when this event is, I got got to have it. 
no, 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 no. There is no pre or post. It's just straight out. It's called bed. Point blank. <laughs> that's it. That bed is marinated me before and after. So there you go. It's called bed. <laughs> straight to bed. I'm out. That's it. <laughs> you know what's so funny? A lot of a lot of like promoters, matchmakers. That's the first thing they say after an event. The first thing I want is I just need about a few hours of sleep. That's true. About four or five hours, six hours of straight sleep. I'll be okay. I'm good. Ask me after that. Right. And that's the same thing. Look at December 3rd, our last show. You were there. I mean, I suffered the night before three broken toes. I had an infected gum on top of that, and I was still doing what I was doing. All I wanted, even though I'm running a fever, I just wanted to sleep. And I still had to dismantle and put back stuff. So once that was said and done, it was like the next morning before I even saw my bed. And I was not moving out of my bed, even if you tried to call me. I just looked and went, not today. <laughs> mm, not happening. Yeah. If you were a superhero, what would be your superhero powers? Ooh, good one. <sighs> Telepathic. Any any reasoning behind it? No, I just you know what? I I just think for me, knowing what you're thinking, what you're looking for is always something that I look for. And if I knew beforehand, it's already there for you. You don't I don't have to waste that time or your time, get it done and it's all over and it made your day. I love it. I love it. And and um Burger or pizza? Uh, depends. Is it from Sicily? <laughs> <laughs> Oven made? Uh, no, it's from Ontario. <laughs> from Pizza Hut. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, we ain't doing that. No, no. Pizza, no, no. pizza, pizza. What are we do? Pizza Nova? Where should we target? Um, let's just put it this way. I, I honestly prefer homemade if it's from the oven. Um, very Italian style because I used to work in an Italian restaurant. So for me, I knew how to make the pizza and I know how it's supposed to be done. So if it's not done a certain way, I'm, I can't do it. Can't eat it. And the burger? Are you making it with seasoning in it? Oh, you only. <laughs> <laughs> I like that with seasoning in it. Yeah. Oh, come on now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, Ben. You. Yeah. All right. So let me ask you super porridge. Good God, never porridge. God, no. Soup all day, 24-7. <laughs> can't do that. We can't do porridge. Nasa. No, no. <laughs> Bula or bun? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're hurting me now. Come on. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go with bula. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gizada or, or coconut drops? Coconut drops, 24-7. That's what we got for y'all, man. Fast hit it. You already know, ladies and gentlemen, we got the one and only. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. You missed one, brother. Which one? Curry goat or oxtail, man. Bite your tongue. That's... <laughs> what? I can't say no to either one. Can I have a combo? <laughs> Is it a combo? Let's do a combo. Let's go with the combo. No, nah, you got to pick <laughs> one. Hey, if I'm cooking it, it's either or. So you're going to have to take a combo if I'm cooking. So I can't help you. Dang, all right, man. We gotta go for the combo. Go for the combo. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I love it, man. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Greg, you already know we appreciate Lee coming through yeah. uh the show, spending some time with us. Uh, we'd love to have her back on again. We definitely will have her back on again for talking sure. some more boxing because we got a lot of female boxing to talk about. Because these women they still gonna be making heavy moves in boxing coming up. There's a lot of big fights looking forward yeah. to. So we got more wait, things to talk wait, about. Wait, I gotta pick your brain because I heard about what you said about Usyk and Tyson Fury and I'm loving it. I'm a Usyk fan from day one. So, you know, and I like Tyson, but you know, but I got to pick your brains, both of you, Taylor versus Seriano, which one takes it in May? Oh, wow. I'll give you my early prediction. Cause it might change. Um, um, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Katie Taylor by UD. Yeah. Interesting. The reason why I seen I just seen Amanda Serrano fight Erica Cruz up close and personal. 
one of the things that I felt like she didn't do so well, she didn't make any adjustments. Right. And the one thing about Katie Taylor is that she makes adjustments. Oh, big time. She mm. get her and she make adjustments. Her coach is very sharp, very, very sharp guy. So yeah. that's my concern. Again, you got to think about it. She has to bring that pop that we haven't seen from Serrano, but she got to do that in Ireland. She got to do it there. Yeah. So it's, you know what I mean? It's a little, it's a little different. I thought yeah. she won the first fight though. Let me keep it real with y'all. Well, you know what? I, yeah. I thought the yeah. same thing too, but hey. A champion you know, finished like a champion. Right. Uh, lucky no, she, finished like a, a cha- she finished like a champion. She could have, she could have quit. She yeah. could have let the, the corner save her, the ref save her. She's like, nah, I'm going to, yeah, she fought every single round hurt after from yeah. hurting like round nine, ten. Yeah, she was doing her thing. Uh, listen, if that didn't put women's pro fights on the map, I don't know what else has next to Ann Wolf and Layla Ali. But if if this second fight happens the way the first one is, there's going to be a third one. Has to be. And, has and to be, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I'm not going for either one of them. I just want to see them fight because that was one of the most beautiful fight I have seen in a long, long time. And it helped put us on the map. So thank you for your predictions. I'm going to hold you both to it. <laughs> yeah. So you know. And yeah. then I'm going to come back and say, so what did I say? <laughs> All right. I'm with that. There yeah. you go, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. One and only, this man. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right, definitely. This is what we got today, man. Um, we got to continue to talk a little bit more about this Lee Wood versus Mauricio Laro situation. We have Ben 